Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, one more time. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Yeah, I do, man. I thank God for it every day. You know, um, my message this morning, man, is real clear. Uh, it's something that's been on me to uh, share. And um, it, it's it's amazing, you know, um, God can do some amazing things for you. But what happens along the way is, and I, and, I, and I don't know that I mean to say but, but the fact that God can do some amazing things for you, there comes adversity along with it. Every single time. It, 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 it just goes without saying. And I've, uh, I was having a... a, a of a fairly, I mean, well, not fairly, but a hugely successful week. I had never seen this type of hatred uh, before. I, I hadn't seen it. And it was, it's a great trick that the devil does, you know. When, when God is blessing you and giving you some, uh, some, some great opportunities in your life, as all of you have gone through, and it is, isn't it amazing how some negative thing crops up, and that's what you have to focus on. I, I found out that I don't have to, but you wind up focusing on it and your energy goes over to that to try to deal with it, counteract, wonder why it was happening. You got to make phone calls. What was this about? Blah, 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 blah. And, and, it, and, it, and it, it, it throws you off the course you are on. The beginning of the week, I was so grateful. I was so amazed. I was really thanking God for opportunity. For this brief moment, the enemy slides this, this little factor in there that causes you to, and it requires your attention. You have to pay it attention because you don't know. You're going, wow, man, let, let me see what this could really be. How, how much dirt is this really that they're trying to do? And so it requires your attention. But in that attention, you lose your focus on really all the blessings and the good thing that God does for you. The the enemy has an amazing trick that he does that. And it was and it was in my head, I gotta tell y'all, all week long, man. And I was doing some amazing stuff. I was having such a blessed week, man, in terms of press and PR and where God was taking me. And then when I got back, I was talking with my wife. And then I was talking to a good friend of ours. And they shared something that really helped me out. And they said to me, new level, new devil. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, it's something really simple. But new level, new devil. Every time you go to another level, every time you go a little bit higher, every time God has a blessing in store for you, every time he moves you in position, do you understand that the enemy's job is to make you not see the blessing? make you not be grateful for it, lose your focus and focus on this that I just threw in your way, this stumbling block, this obstacle, this trickery. And man, I was, I was, I got, I just got to tell you, man, I mean, I, it, it was so filled with hatred that I had to, I really spent some time addressing it. I, you know, I got publicists on the phone. I said, what's, what's happening here? Y'all not watching this? Y'all not what, what, what was, what was this attack? You knew you didn't know these angles. What, what was And, and you know, Steve, chill. New level, new devil. If you get a promotion on your job, guess what? Somebody ain't happy that you got the promotion. So here come the hate. You don't even, you don't even really know these people. You, you have no idea. Every time you make a decision to make your relationship with your spouse better, Man, this is it. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to do this, man, so me and my girl can go on and have this, or me and my man can go on and have this. Watch what happens. Every single time, here comes the new level, <laughs> the new devil, the trick. You don't need to do that. What you doing that for her? She don't appreciate it. He ain't going to appreciate it. Look over here, man. Look at that right there. Ain't he nothing? You know, he missed. He didn't call you, and he said it was going to. All types of stuff. It just happens all the time. And I was sitting here talking with this friend, really good friend, very spiritual person. 
And they said, uh, you know something, Steve? You know, I was talking to Jesus and said, I was having this conversation with Christ. And I said, God, for real? You mean to tell me every time that something good happens to me? You mean every time I try to go to the next level, every time you put me on the next level, you mean to tell me that I got to go through this right here? Are you for real? <laughs> and then my friend said, Jesus said to her, they did it to me. <laughs> and we just fell out laughing. They did it to me. They did it to him. They did it to him. For him to go to the next level. And, you know, I was just um, I, w- I was just going over the whole story about the crucifixion and everything. That had to be amazing, man. Of all the hate he had endured, all the prosecuting he had endured, they thought ultimately what we'll do is we'll nail him on a cross and crucify him, and that'll be the end of him. And we'll put him in this tomb, and we'll put this big stone up there, and that'll be the end of him. But what they did not know was all you was doing was setting the tone for the next level because eventually the stone got rolled away, and he went and got placed with his father, where he was headed to anyway. He ultimately knew that his ultimate goal was to get to his father. So when you when you when you thought you were doing what you were doing to him, and you put him in the tomb and you put the big stone up in there, and the stone got rolls got rolled away, and he went eventually to where he was trying to get to. That story is in place for all of us to remember that when we are going through some things. Could it be because we are going to a place? You know, it could be just a place in life. It could be just a a, a different level in life. That's all it has to be. But there is going to be the adversarial challenges that come with it. And those are the moments we must expect, expect and take them head on and still not lose your focus or appreciation for what God has done for you. So in light of all of that, I'm able to say today, that I thank my Heavenly Father, I really do, for all the blessings he's bestowed upon me and all of the haters and all of the liars and all of the backstabbers and all those people. When you get through lying, when you get through stabbing, when you get through gossiping and doing what you do, I'm still going to the next level. I'm still going. You cannot stop what God is has in store for you. No one can stop that. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have a special public service announcement to make before we start the Steve Harvey Morning Show. First of all, let me say hello to Shirley, Carla, Martha, the South Jr., and nephew Tommy. Good morning, everyone. This is morning. very important. This is a public service announcement. To all Sesame Street (laughs) costumes, all Sesame Street puppets, all Sesame Street employees, I have just come from the NAACP meeting, and it got out of hand. I am forewarning you that parents is going to start snatching Sesame Street folks. I'm just letting you know that. It's, it's out there, really? straight snatching. Yeah. Yeah. Snatching and shaking. Ain't going to be no punching. We're yeah. not going to harm you real bad. But we are going to snatch and shake till your helmet come off and you are exposed. Then we're taking your picture. Because we gonna, we tired of pointing that big bird and Ernie and Bert and all these people that's racist. We want to know who you is. <laughs> Those are the new things we're doing. Public service announcement. Now let's get to the real Steve Harvey Morning it. Show. I just felt <laughs> it was nah. necessary to say nah. that. Nah. Ladies and gentlemen, we nah. are here. No. Nah. 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 Nah, nah. Ain't God good. Junior, what's on your mind today, man? Oh, no, no, sir. We're going to stay right there. <laughs> what They need to know what you what we doing as black people when you ignore our children. Well, see, it, got, we got too much film and evidence now. And then it's uh, other black people calling in. You know, same thing happened to uh, Louis mm-hmm. Gerard. Mm-hmm. 
And uh-huh. we, you know, we starting to hear this stuff right here. <laughs> not and Gerard. Gerard. It happened to yours, too. <laughs> not little Gerard. Not LJ. Because I had Nisa out there, and they did the same thing to Nisa. Okay, <laughs> see, now, see, once that get around, I'm just I'm just doing this because I'm a Christian. And I just feel <laughs> the Lord. Though, you need to know what's about to pop off so you don't get comfortable. Like, you mm-hmm. can just continue. Because, right. see, listen to me. You ain't the police. You, know, no. you ain't no. the police. So we snatching y'all for real. Time to get up. For real. Mm-hmm. And right. just wanted to let y'all know that's what we doing now. And uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I ain't trying to scare nobody, but I am trying to help you. Because this is a show of motivation, uplift, inspiration, and mostly information. And after coming from I'll the NAACP. I'm yeah. just letting y'all know it got out of hand. Now, the leadership tried to calm them, but it did not work. Because mm-hmm. you was hearing stuff loud at the back. They ain't did nothing to your baby. <laughs> 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 not the testimony. Did, didn't, you get, didn't you hear stuff in the back? Like, you, don't, you don't tell me how to do mine now. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then this one, then I had that baby. You ain't going to do what you want to do to yeah. mine. And That's then that right. was it. And then all the black women got together, and then they just moved to the front. Then that went to all the black dudes sat down and went, well, I guess we're going to have to do something about this. And that's when Daddy said, all right, I'm snatching. And that, that's what happened after me. Thank y'all. Oh, man. All right. No, thank you for the laughs, as always. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, run that prank back with the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time to start your morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Huh? You heard me. Huh? Uh, come on. Y'all want something stupid this morning? Is, am, am I being summons? Am I being summons? <laughs> we have it sent for you. We have it <laughs> you, for you. You know what you do. <laughs> I'm not, not going to hold you back on it, baby. You're right here. Drive us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it to you. This is called baby weight. Baby oh, weight. See, we could have waited on that. <laughs> see, right oh, there. Oh, baby, wait a minute. <laughs> you said wait a minute. You said it that time. Oh, see, there, I'm getting better. You know, when I do my exercise, I ain't done them this morning. But when I do them, I'm cold. Uh-huh. <laughs> baby, wait. There we wait. go. Fell off. I got it. I did what I could. Come on, cat. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach a uh, trainer, please. Yeah, this is Trina. Hey, uh, Trina, my name is uh, Ernest, Ernest Murphy, down here at the bus barn with the, uh, from the school district. Your son is, is Devin, am I right? Uh, yeah. Okay. No, he's in the is sixth that... grade, I think. I Wait, think is everything rides... okay? Yeah, 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 everything is fine. I think he's on, he rides bus 90, bus 93. Does he ride bus 93? Are you familiar yeah. with the bus number? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, he does. Okay, so now... The school board has implemented a new rule, and um, we're, we're having to call uh, a lot of parents and let them know about the new rule uh, okay. for, as far as the buses are concerned. Now, from my understanding, each child that gets on the bus has to weigh less than 125 pounds. That's what the new rule that is imp- implemented by the wait, school board. Wait, so, what did you uh, wait, wait, Can you say that again? I feel like uh, I just missed something. Each, each child that gets on the bus has to weigh less than 125 pounds. I don't understand. I don't understand. Can, can, so wait, what's okay, so what, is, what does that mean? So starting on Monday, starting on Monday, what they're going to do is they're going to, the, the bus driver will have a scale, and he will weigh the kids what? before they get on on the bus, I, I I I understand, man. Then, but like I say, I'm calling, I'm calling every parent wait, that they. Uh, wait, what the? the f- you they, say you're gonna you're gonna weigh my child before he gets on the bus? That's that's I, what the new rule. That's what the new rule. Is. If that, he's over one twenty five, then he wait, he'll either have to walk wait, or you'll have to take him to school. Wait, you, no, wait, man, I have a job. Okay, I have a job. I'm not gonna take my kid to school. That doesn't. I don't. I, that's what the bus is for. That's what I, my tax dollars pay for. But what right. Is, but, but what's me, the reasoning, me, the rationale behind this? Okay, let me tell you what's going on. From what they're saying uh, okay. here is that the, the weight of these children is wearing down these transmissions on this bus, on these buses. The transmission, is, the transmission cannot take all of that. So, 
<laughs> they are limiting the weight of each child. So now how much does that, that I think over, that's discrimination. Huh? I think that's discrimination. But is, that, is your son to, over, is he over 125 pounds? He, okay, he is. Okay, he's a, he's then, yeah, that, that, then you gonna, you're probably going to have to take your son to school or he's going to have to walk. No, he, I, probably, he probably need to walk to school if he's already 125 pounds. That is so rude. <laughs> what the absolute <laughs> are you talking about? Like, seriously? Uh, all, uh, ma'am, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is if your son... <laughs> Is overweight, uh, 125. You know, maybe the exercise are doing good, but like I say, the, the school board is not going to allow him on the bus. But, sir, I I will not accept this. I mean, who do I need to call? Is there a manager? Is there a city council member? I mean, this is seriously the most tough discriminatory practice I've ever heard of. It doesn't even make sense. You're talking okay. about a child. I understand, but we're talking about a child that weighs more than a grown person. You, your son Listen, is a heavy. I need to get, a, what is your name, sir? Tell me your name again. My, I'm name, writing is this Ernest. my name is Ernest. I'm down here at the bus ball. I would like to speak with a supervisor, like now. Okay. Would you, you do not get to speak to my about my child that way. You don't get to speak to any kid that way. You should not be working at a school if that is your attitude. That is I'm not, I don't work at the school. I work at the bus ball. I'm down here at the bus ball. And they gave me your number. Evidently, they right. Because you're saying he's over 125 pounds. I, I am in absolute shock. This is so <laughs> up to you. Like, okay. Do so do you have a fat oh, ass child? I mean, do you have, excuse me, I'm sorry, do you have a big child? Listen, what my child looks like, how much he weighs, is none of your business. I'm going to call the school. They should be working with your company if this is the way that you treat people. And you talk about children this way? But what the f*** is the matter with you? I guess what they're doing is mm-hmm. this is the way of them approaching obesity. You know, let right. the kids yeah, walk to school. Whoever, whoever over 125, let them walk. They might walk it all. Your son might. Listen, meet. listen. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, okay? I have to work. My son is getting on that f- bus, and I'm going to call the school board and should not be working with you. Maybe another bus company. I don't know, but I'm calling the city. I will call whoever the f- I need to call, but you need to give me a supervisor's name right now. Right now. Do you like, think you need to start cooking different so, so Devin don't have, uh, you know, maybe maybe it starts at home with what you feed me. Thank you. Everybody you know, I am calling your supervisor. I'm calling the, the city. I'm calling the school. I am going to get you so fired. Like, I can't even believe that you're allowed to make this call. Like, are other parents okay with this? Well, well, you. I'm, I'm calling. When you're on your way to work in the morning, Trina, do you listen to the Steve Harvey morning show? Oh, my God. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> Sister, this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. Yes, yes, Nephew yes. Nephew Tommy. Your, your cousin Vicky got me to prank phone call you, baby. Oh, my God. I'm going to kill her. Yeah. God. I mean, I was like, oh, my God. I love Steve Harvey. I love you. I was going to have a heart attack. Thank God. You got to tell me this, baby. Trina, what is the baddest? And I mean the baddest radio show in the land. Steve Harvey. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you, nephew. Thank you. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO with our Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, in the building, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Jordan Peele's movie, Nope is number one at the box office and Black Panther Wakanda Forever has released a powerful official movie trailer. Also in trending headlines, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated has released a statement in solidarity with their frat brother, Brandon Calloway. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour, but right now it is time to ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey, in the building ready for your love questions. Anya in Charleston writes, my husband and I have two dogs and our neighbor babysits our dogs. 
When we go back from va- when we got back from vacation, the neighbor had changed our dog's food and gave us a bag of food for both dogs. She said we'd get the hang of it sooner or later. Is she calling us bad pet parents? Don't and if so, dog. <laughs> and if so, is she out of line or what? What what is going on? Hey, can I tell you as a CLO, I don't give a damn about this question. I don't give a damn about your dog. I'm the CLO. I'm chief love officer. I don't give a what. They they love their dogs. They love their pets. What? You love them. I don't don't give a damn about your dog. Don't ever write me no more about no damn dog. And then you use, then you, then you trying to use human words to make me feel like it'll soften my heart towards these damn dogs. (laughs) We have two dogs in our neighbor babysit. They dog sit. They didn't babysit your damn dog. They dog sit your dog. And so what they changed the damn dog food. That I oh, bet they ate it. These are her Pets. fur babies. Are well, the, the fur, fur babies, babies is on the new diet. You can't be changing the dog's dog food. Well, you shouldn't serious. have gave them to the white people. Because the white people <laughs> is feeding them wilderness. And they want the kind with the live salmon in it, the live chicken in it, and no byproducts in it. Now, you, now your dog is eating berries, salmon, chicken, raw, Healthy. and everything natural. That's yeah. what they eat. Mm. She's out of line. The neighbor was yeah. out of line, CLO. Well, what dog. you don't do is put your damn dogs over here with me. Because when you come, to, you come to Rome, you do like the Romans do. Your dog is eating what our dog eats. <laughs> Now, we're not All buying right. no new damn food because your dog, your dog is fitting to eat this brand called Wilderness Fort. <laughs> and that's what they asses eat. Well, the, the dog sitter said they would get the hang of it sooner or later. So You don't see, there ain't no black people in dog <laughs> Why food Why you keep commercial. going like that, man? <laughs> yes, yes, there, there is. are. I ain't seen it. I want to be in black one. people. I'm Last yeah, time I saw a black person in a uh, dog food commercial was Alpo. Alpo? <laughs> I ain't even heard nothing about them no more. They got ran out of business. All right, we're moving on Green. before we run out of time. <laughs> yes, and he's Green. not black, Lauren Green. <laughs> Call me about no damn dogs on the CLO segment. <laughs> but she loves her babies. All right, Camille in Southfield says... I have a five. I have a five-year-old daughter that acts too grown, and it's because of her daycare. She repeats whatever she hears, and her teacher is an old woman that gossips all day. It's a good school, and I don't want to report an old black lady, but I also can't have my child repeating what she's heard. What do I do? Well, when Winston was a little boy, mm-hmm. Winston went to this special daycare. We had put him in creme de la creme. Oh, I oh, I heard it. Really fine, good. fine. School. Yes, yes. yes. Winton had mm-hmm. gone up there. Winton was about four years old. Mm-hmm. And Winton came home one day, and I told Winton to do something. Mm-hmm. Winton sat down in the floor, just as calm, mm-hmm. looked at me, and started slamming his legs against the floor, screaming at the top of his lung, and slapping his hands on the floor. Uh-huh. Winton has a saw tantrum. the little white kids have a <laughs> tantrum. Uh-huh. So Winton came in and had a tantrum. Ooh, we don't so do tantrums. I got down in the flow right, right next to him and I had a tantrum. Yes. Yes. On uh-huh. his ass. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> My son ain't bought nothing back home from up at that school. So now I don't know why you should, you should take this Camille but that's what I did and went to is a fine young man now. He <laughs> celebrated his 25th birthday and he works for his father full time. Uh-huh. And he tells people all the time, one of his favorite pastimes, him and his older brother, is mm-hmm. sharing some of the monumentous ass whoopings that we've had <laughs> over the years <laughs> that helped keep them out of prison and keep them on a the straight and narrow and knowing how to be respectful of women. The little girl, the five-year-old girl, is yeah. gossiping like the older woman. Mm-hmm. She, ain't no problem. She's not ain't throwing no tantra. No, no, gossip is the same thing. She yeah. at home, girl. <laughs> yeah, she girl. Right. <laughs> did you hear? Did you know? Girl. Oh, that. And then yeah. that's how the ass would start. Girl. Yeah. <laughs>
can never make it okay. to another word. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we can move on. All right. Taryn in Gatlinburg says, I'm 27 years old and my boyfriend is 37. We get negative comments about our age difference, and it's begun to affect how he treats me. We've stopped going out as much as we used to, and it's killing our vibe. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be with him if he's ashamed of me. Why is he with me if he's worried about my age? Listen to me. See, that ain't a big age gap. No. The problem you got is Taryn looks old as hell. <laughs> See, that's what it is. She is uh, Taryn. She's Taryn. She's Taryn. Uh-huh. Okay, Late. well, the boy, your boyfriend looks old as hell. That's <laughs> what the problem is. Like her daddy? Ain't, ain't nobody said nothing about no 37, 27. Yeah. Don't, I don't even talk uh-uh. about that. That uh-uh. ain't nothing right there. Right. It's mm-hmm. the way he it, uh, looks. At 27? Now, y'all in Gatlin, they in Gatlin, Tennessee? Gatlinburg. 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 Yeah, they all up there with him, Ryan Dollywood and all that there. He old looking. <laughs> he look, he look a bit of 53. Uh, at 37? <laughs> like her daddy. That, like her I'm daddy. telling you, that's what's happening. His outfit is crazy. His job. <laughs> He, he probably work at a logging mill or something like that. A uh, what? You know, a logging mill. He got an old-ass job. <laughs> and so that's your problem. It, you and not, he treating you different because he know, he know the age difference is visible. It mm-hmm. ain't the 37 and 27. It's how he look, how he okay. walk. How he look. he okay. walk and look old. <laughs> he walk? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's get to this last one, Steve, if we can. Vance in Lexington says, I'm a 58-year-old single man, and I have a girlfriend that is thick, and I have a girlfriend that is thin. My older sister calls them thick and or thin to their faces, and last week she made a song about thick and thin and sang it in front of my girlfriend. (laughs) Wait a minute. How, how can I how can I get her to stop making jokes around them? Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the new hit song, "Thick and Thin." Okay. <laughs> I got two girls. Oh man. Uh, well, when we come back, I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thick and we'll thin. have more of the Steve Harvey Morning well, Show. When I come back, we'll be playing the new hit song, <laughs> "Thick and Thin." Right, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, before we get to entertainment news, uh, you wanted to address Vance in Lexington. He wrote in to the CLO, Chief Love Officer, you. Uh, he's a 58-year-old single man. He has a girlfriend that's thick and one that's thin. And his uh, sister, you know, makes fun, makes jokes and stuff like that. She even made a song called Thick and uh, Thick or Thin. So well, I got my hands on the song just yeah. now. Oh, you do? Oh, well, really? What is Because I wrote it. Oh. 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 Okay. This is a song okay. about his girlfriend. Of- Here we go, right? Mm-hmm. I like what... Oh, hold on, hold on. Here we go. <laughs> I got one thick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got one that's thin. <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. My sister found out. <laughs> Sing it. She's... Criticizing my win. <laughs> she likes to write about him in song. Yeah. He wants her to stop. Like that's gonna affect me. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. oh, but I still like what I like, and oh. they both like me. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got one that's thick. Hey. Yeah. One that's thick. And the other one is thin. Other one is thin. I don't give a damn what my sister say. <laughs> Cause she ain't getting me. <laughs> this is just for me, myself, and I. First two. And I. First one got big thigh. <laughs> <laughs> and the little one is a uh-huh. cutie, hey, mm-hmm. but she ain't got much booty. Hey, <laughs> hey, now, now the thick one got big eyes. <laughs> the skinny one ain't got none of that. Uh-huh. 
But I don't care, cause sometimes I don't like it fast. Sometimes I just want my women. I like them thick and thin. <laughs> Do they know about oh, each other? Oh, my sister needs to stay out of my business. Yeah. She just my king. That's <laughs> last one, last one. Oh, last even know about each other. Right. <laughs> Had them over on Christmas Day. What? Really? The way I pulled it off, oh, I put God. the little oh. one behind the Christmas tree, kept her <laughs> out the way. <laughs> She's that little? <laughs> nah, the thick one was in the kitchen. Uh-huh. Yeah. What she you think cook, huh? she was doing? Cooking for eating. Oh, she was in there tasting everything, oh. making <laughs> sure. I knew what I was doing. All right, last yeah. verse. Last verse. Now, <laughs> they both is mine. <laughs> That's how you end it? Till <laughs> the end of time. <laughs> oh, Lord. This Just ignorant show. Keep minding your business. <laughs> Don't get in this. I like one of them thin, one of them thin. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Thank that's you. it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last word Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the CLO, Chief Love <laughs> Officer Steve <laughs> Harvey in the building with a song. Outstanding. Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to get to this entertainment news today. Uh, the number one movie in America is Jordan Peele's Nope. Starring Kiki Palmer, that's right, bringing in a whopping $44 million at the box office. So we got to say congratulations to Jordan Peele and Uh, Kiki Palmer. Also, David Kalua was in it, yeah. And uh, Kiki Palmer is not playing that colorism game. Uh, Some people on social media are trying to compare Kiki and uh, Zendaya's career, all right? Um, Kiki is not the one she's not a victim and she said she has been successful for a very long time yeah Yeah, she has yeah yeah people Mm -hmm. just do anything yeah Mm -hmm. yes and zendaya's light skin kiki's brown and they want to you know say have some something to say about that and i saw the movie kiki was really really good in the movie she really was she made the movie her character Mm -hmm. 44 million dollars impressive jordan peele ain't nothing wrong with that all right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Speaking of movies, everyone on social media is reacting to the newly released Black Panther Wakanda Forever official movie trailer. It was so powerful and emotional. Director Ryan Coogler said the uh, cast and the entire movie team put their love for the late great Chadwick Boseman into the film. And uh, as we all know, of course, Chadwick played King T'Challa and sadly passed away in 2020 after a private battle with colon cancer. So Black Panther, Wakanda Forever will be released in theaters November 11th. I can't wait. Yeah, I I saw the trailer. I Mm -hmm. I was crying. I I missed the trailer. trailer. Mm -hmm. It's on social media. It's on uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Wakanda Forever, you know, Instagram. Uh It's Mm -hmm. out there. But look forward to the movie November 11th, right around that beginning of the holiday season and everything. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a good one to see for sure. Black Panther, Wakanda forever. You are forever missed, Chadwick Boseman. They showed an image of him in the in the trailer, and you Mm -hmm. just, ugh. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. uh All right, uh, we're gonna switch gears here. Coming up in twenty minutes after the hour, still trending. Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, and Kevin Hart all on stage in New York City. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Dave Chappelle was the surprise opening act for Kevin Hart and Chris Rock on Saturday night in Madison Square Garden. Dave Chappelle talked about cancel culture and his recent attack, and he said he didn't want his attacker to die, but he hoped his attacker would catch monkeypox and his butt would itch for about four to six weeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we wrong for laughing at that. Dave Chappelle is... I know. I love it. <laughs> 
Then Kevin gave Chris Rock a goat, and Rock said that he wasn't taking care of it. Uh, Rock also talked about cancel culture and uh, addressed his Oscar slap and said, anyone who says words hurt has has never been punched in the face, okay? They've never Mm. been slapped like that. Mm. Uh, Chappelle went on to thank Kevin and Chris Rock and said that comedians have a special bond. Is that the and case? what was the Comedian. name of the goat? What was the goat's name? Will Smith. Uh-huh. <laughs> they named the goat Will Smith. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> Kevin named him Will Smith. Will yes, Smith. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was good. It was really that good. Was good. Yeah. What a I like that camaraderie. Though. Camaraderie, that's, yeah. That's pretty explosive. That's pretty funny, uh-huh. that's good. What you think, Steve? <laughs> no, I love it, man. I mean, it mm-hmm. is what it is. Them dudes and so and three bad boys right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, currently working right now, ain't nobody better. Nobody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Yeah. Right I don't know that level. That's, yeah. that's huge. Mm-hmm. Is it true, though, that comedians, you all have a special bond? Because that's what Chappelle said, that it's like this brotherhood. No, it is. <laughs> it oh, is absolutely. because we all know. Mm-hmm. We all and what do you? what is it that you know when you say that? What do you mean? We all that? know what it is, what it takes to walk what out. It takes. There. Uh-huh. To, to okay. walk out there is a different beast, man. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of guys that's not good at it, that's walking out there. Mm-hmm. But the greats that walk out there that say something compelling and funny mm-hmm. or just write, you know, in a way, man, where you remember some bits, mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. it's hard to stand there, man, especially when you do an hour. It's hard to stand there with just a microphone a mic stand, a spotlight, a bar stool, and a glass of water. It's hard. Well, you must make it look easy because a lot of people think that they can just get out there and be funny and they do they, it. But they haven't like done you do it. Yeah. You know go, what I'm go, saying, go, though? Yeah. Go do yeah. five mm-hmm. minutes, ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Do ten yeah, minutes. that's the thing right mm-hmm. there, T. That five minutes. That started. Go do, go do ten minutes. minutes. Mm-hmm. That's your five minutes. Start, th- start from there. Start from mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I want I want to see it, man. I want to see it. You almost make it look very easy. Well, <laughs> you you make it look easy because that's what you do. Yeah, it ain't easy. Mm-hmm. Right, people right. think it is because you. It make ain't it nothing look easy. So I easy. Talk, mm-hmm. talk, just go online. Just go to the <laughs> Laugh Factory and look at the comedians that go up there. Mm-hmm. The struggle is real. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. and and then the and then the what they think is funny. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! You be going what? All right, coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, we'll check Steve's voicemail, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to check Steve's voicemail, and if you want to leave a message for Steve, call him, 877-29-STEVE. All right, Steve, this first caller has a spiritual question for you. Good evening, Steve. Thank you so much for sharing your inspirational relationship with God, with the world. My question is simple. How does one stop longing for something that God has obviously said no to that particular request? Thank you. Bye-bye. That's that's everybody's Mm -hmm. dilemma. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We want what we want. That's everybody's dilemma. Mm -hmm. And then also, sometimes what you want just is in the form of temptation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always longing for something you ask God for and he told you no. Sometimes God makes moves he know you wouldn't make because he heard conversations you didn't hear. Mm. And he made decisions that you just not going to make for the betterment of yourself. Mm -hmm. Example, Mm -hmm. I want this relationship to work with this person. God know that ain't the one you need. So sometimes he don't aid you in doing that. Now, you can run off and do it yourself, but you're going to get beat up. He not coming back. You quit asking God for him to come back. He not coming back. That ain't got nothing to do with God. The dude you want and made a decision that he don't want you. Now, what you keep asking God for him for? (laughs) Instead, you should ask God for somebody that wants you. So sometimes, and I had to learn this myself, (laughs) the thing that I'm asking God for that I keep getting a no to is for a reason. Yeah. And it's usually been because God has something better for me. Better all the time. Mm -hmm. But you got to open up yourself to the better and stop thinking you got the answer. You can't ask God to bless you and then tell him how to do it. 
Oh, the dude. Uh, that's just that. Uh, nah. Amen, brother. Uh huh. All right. You better true. preach up in here. You mm-hmm. better minister. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> this caller. All right. Last week we had a CLO question, Steve. It was about the. Uh, it was from the married woman who had emailed us. She asked us if she was wrong because she purchased Raider season football tickets but changed them from her husband's name to her name after he told her he preferred attending the games with his boys instead of going with her. So this caller has a comment about that. Hey, Steve. Uh, I'm listening to your radio show this morning, and I agree with you. My husband is one of three brothers. The brothers need to be together sometimes, just the men. I'm okay with him hanging with his brothers. He don't need me around him all the time. We together 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Let that man have some men time. If you don't, you're going to drive him crazy, and you're going to want to know why he ain't home or he's coming home and go straight to sleep. These women need to let it loose. When you want to hang with your girls, you hang with your girls. He don't ask to come. I love it when my husband hang with his brothers. Let them men have their men time. Y'all have a good day. I love her. She said that, didn't she? She said that. Because, listen, everybody needs me time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, when I tell my wife I'm going on a golf trip, she don't be talking about, no, can I go? No. She know I don't want her to go. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to go play golf, talk trash, get through, Mm -hmm. go eat without showering. Then I want to take a shower. (laughs) I don't want all these speeches you got. You've been playing golf. I'm hungry now. <laughs> I'm hungry now. I'm hungry now. And now here she come. She done um. walked in the room. I do want to go. Well, you ain't. <laughs> you ain't. And get out of this studio, Marjorie. You're not going to play golf. Damn. Hey, Marjorie. Hey, talking to her. You are not going to play golf. No. You don't want to go, I you're not going. Uh-uh. I want to talk, try. I don't want to shower when you ask me to shower. Hey, man. No. Stop. I want to eat now. Why don't you take a shower first? You'll enjoy your food better. Who need a shower to enjoy their food better? You're crazy, man. You're crazy. I need that. Man, can we go to break? Yeah, yeah. It's about that time. <laughs> All right, all right. Coming up next, it is the nephew Uh, with today's prank phone call. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Listen to this title, will you? I'm submissive. I'm submissive, but is he worth it? Hmm. I'm submissive, okay, but is he worth it? Mm. Mm. All right, you got to know that. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll get into that in just a little that. bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, just what is all that? All right, we'll find out in just a few. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? What's happening? Well, this, you know, this kind of ties in with some things I've been wanting to talk to you guys about. You and Shirley and Carl, I've been wanting to talk to y'all about this kind of stuff. Oh, oh really? really? What's up? Okay. What's up? Yeah, what's going on? Well, it's your appearance at work. Your okay. appearance. Uh huh. What what about and, it? Um, well, it, I I think this this mm-hmm. prank kind of tells it all. Uh, what? Uh, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, name of this prank is you need to Mona. You need to fix your appearance. Okay. You Wait, need to. Wh- wh- what are you saying? I think I think I, 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 I think I said it. I think I. I mean, but uh, you're talking to Mona, yeah. but then you brought yeah. Shirley and I in it, so we yeah. trying to figure it's it out. It's something I I, I did the very prank vague. on Mona, but this is uh-huh. something I've been wanting to say to y'all, you know, okay. about okay. your appearance. Well, let's hear okay. it. Well, let's, let's hear it. it. Yeah, let's yeah. hear it. I bet I've been you my you reaction. Years. But Shirley, I bet you my reaction probably gonna be the same as Mona. As Mona. Let's, uh-huh. let's hear it. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well. All right, cat dog. If you would. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach a uh, Mona, please. This is her. Hi. How you doing? My name is uh, James. Over with the uh, with the corporation. Uh, I'm with the uh, corporate wardrobe. You've been with the company for about eight years now. Am I, am I correct, Mona? Yes, sir. Okay. You're correct. All right. Like I said, I'm from uh, corporate wardrobe. 
wanted to kind of give you a call. Uh, there's been some conversation about it, but wanted to give you a call about your appearance in the office. Okay. Okay. Now, um, your 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 appearance seems to be pretty much intact as far as your clothing is concerned. So it's nothing. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. Now, first of all, what are my appearance have to do with your corporation? Well, what's going on? Like I said, you, you you've been with Corp for about what eight years now? Am I right? Yes, sir. I have. Okay. And um, but you calling what, me, telling me something about my appearance? Right, so I right. Need now, to what know I, what I wanted to talk to you about is that what 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 some of the uh, uh, workers in the office are having a problem with, and what we want to do is get you an actual doctor's appointment because uh, we we want to see about helping you get uh, a breast reduction. Oh, what a, what a breast reduction? Okay, now you 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 you. I mean, from from my understanding that you're. Your breasts are too large. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, who is this first? Who is this again? Who is this again? My name is James. Like I said, I'm with Corporate Wardrobe, and I'm, okay. I'm calling you actually pretty much from Human Resources of Corporation. Okay, now, if you ain't calling him by something else, certainly what we do here, instead of you calling me, telling me something about giving me a breast reduction, what you need to do is try and dig up some more because what I'm doing up in here, I'm going well. They was on here, and I'm going to wear them. They came out, I wear them for them. Mona, all we want to do is we want to get you a doctor's appointment so we can help you get your get your breasts reduced so, you know, you, you'll feel a lot more comfortable and the people in the office will be a lot more comfortable, okay? Man, I'm not, you ain't finna do a thing. You ain't finna come in and tell me some but what y'all gonna do to me. What you talking about? I've been with this business for almost eight years, and I ain't never had no problem with nobody telling me something about my breasts. So what you need to do is find out who's going around here making these rumors. And first of all, I'm going to dig up, because maybe one of these up in here talking about me and, you know, jealous because I'm on top of my s***. And they jealous of me because I'm on, you know, I'm on mine. And they around here got a problem with my breast. Look, ma'am, my job is to get your breast reduced. I got to get, I got to bring them down. <laughs> my is big, too. Can you reduce that? Excuse me? My is big. Can you reduce that? Ma'am, listen, I got to get your breast down to it. I got to get a down. I gotta bring them down. You ain't gonna do a thing. What you gonna get down is your. That's what you gonna get down. And what Ma'am, you listen. Do is stop worrying about my breath. So you and whoever, whoever calling you or telling you something about what I'm doing at this this, tell them I said to kiss my. So what I need to do, I'm gonna do me. So if they don't like that, then hey, holler at them because I'm gonna find whoever doing it because they jealous. I'm a bad. They don't understand it. And the men come in. What? Who? Who? They come to who? They come to my desk. Ask for who? They ask for me. Mona, Mona, I understand that. But what I'm saying is your breasts are a distraction in the office. And I got to get your breasts brought down. First of all, whoever you are, you might need to come see. You can sit your in the front of my desk and see how it looks. You might want to come back and bring all your crew. I, uh, Mona, I can't. I can't. I don't want to come sit at your desk and see your... your, your I got to get you to a doctor and get your breast reduced. Now, when do you want an appointment? No, I ain't going to see no... You're going, you're going to a doctor, Mona. You're going to a doctor. You bring his over here because I ain't going to no doctor. What you talking about? The doctor, whoever you trying to me to go see, I ain't trying to hear. You hear? Please you know don't what, Mona, they said, what I'm going to do is... They said you would act like this, Mona. They said you would react just this way. This is what the people in the office are talking about. I don't give a damn what they... I've been in this company for almost eight years. I ain't never had nobody calling me telling me some about my breast. What you need to do, first of all, you need to come in and see me. Because you might like what you see. Because I'm a big, bad, bold, beautiful woman. You better hear me. Hear? What is your name and what's your, what's your name? Why do you need my name? I need your name because I ain't never had somebody call my damn job and tell me some about my best. I need to know your name because I'm going to get some lawyer in this because I don't play this shit. I need I don't play that. So whoever you is in your carpet or whoever calls me by my breath, I don't play that. I need your name. I really do. Because if you don't, I'm going to find out who this is. Do you want to know my name? Do you want to know my name? I want to know your damn name. Hell yeah, I want to know your name. What is it? Are you listening? What is it? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your girlfriend. You <laughs> Why is her breast bigger than mine? Get the fuck out of limp. <laughs> Man, y'all need to quit, boy. You gonna make me go out. <laughs> <laughs> you 
right. <laughs> Woo, I can't believe to see her breast bigger than mine. And then she got a <laughs> limp. <laughs> oh. I listen to this show every morning, and I just can't believe I got got. I I'm got gonna get you, that baby. She did it. She got me. You know, she got me, but I'm going to catch her lip. I'm going to catch her walking. It's okay. I'm going to get her. I'm All gonna right, get her. baby. I got one more thing for you, baby. What is? What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. Baby, you already know that one and only Steve Harvey morning show. <laughs> hey, Tommy, guess what? Since uh, you don't play on this here phone, uh, I just want to let you know I'm a size 16 with a low cut. Are you still with it or what? <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Uh-uh. Let's back what? that thing up. Back yeah. Up. <laughs> and I want to talk to y'all about that when we at work. Backing that thing up. Y'all really... Uh, so inappropriate. <laughs> Do you hear yourself? Do you hear yourself? You can't say these things. <laughs> you play way yeah. too much, especially today, sir. Yeah. You can't do that. I mean, we discussing things, right? No, we're not. We're telling you <laughs> what to do and what not to do. Okay. Y'all don't, don't want constructive criticism. That, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Oh! I, I, I see what this is. Don't put us in your little prank, nephew. <laughs> <laughs> well, i tell you where I better put you. I better put you in, in front of a television on Friday night because Ready to Love Miami yeah. is back. And it jumps off Friday night on the OWN Network. You do not want to miss it. Hosted by yours truly, Nephew Tommy. Oh, my God. I got a brand new Brand new group of singles that are searching and looking for that incredible four-letter word, L-O-V-E, love. Oh, my God. And I will navigate and help you find it. Tune in as a brand new show, Friday night on the own network. Yeah. Yeah. Nine eight seven. All right, nephew. Oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be watching. You know we will. Coming up next, it is the Strawberry Letter. The subject is, I'm submissive. But is he worth it? We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. All right. Right now. Yeah, Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, I'm submissive, but is he worth it? Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for three years and he cheated before our wedding. We met online in an online chat room and he said I had all of the values that he desired in a wife. He quoted some scripture and I was hooked. He'd been married before, and he said his biggest problem was that his wife was not submissive. He said she was stubborn and argumentative. I was 48 when we got married, and it was my first marriage. So I aimed to please him and do everything just like he asked me to. I let him run his house and mine, and I was the ideal girlfriend because I never stressed him out by questioning him. He came to see me, have sex, and then leave. I did not say a word because for the most part, he's a good man. I would listen to him bragging to his friends about how lucky he was to have me. Then he cheated. (coughs) Excuse me. (laughs) I tried to hold it. Sorry. Then he cheated and he couldn't lie about it because his shirt was dirty and he smelled like a woman. He told me that it was the alcohol and he said he'd never drink hard liquor again. But he lied. His affair happened just two months before our wedding. He got drunk on our wedding night and told his parents that he hopes he didn't make a big mistake. That rocked my soul because all I've done from the beginning is cater to him and make sure all of his needs were met. I should have left before I made any vows to him. Now, when I try to spoil him, he tells me to leave him alone. He picks fights so he can sleep on the couch. I haven't slept in the bed with my husband in three weeks. I vowed to stay, for better or worse, but we've hit rock bottom. Is he worthy of a good, submissive wife like me, or should I change my ways and start acting like his equal and see what happens? Please advise. Um, What are you doing? Really, what is going on in this relationship, period? I mean, you said 
he came to see you to have sex and then leave right there. You should have known that something was wrong. That was the first red flag and you, you let it happen. Um, that, that should never have been okay with you. You waited a long time to get married and, and this is what you end up with. Like this control freak, this dictator, you allowed him to treat you any kind of way. You put your needs and your wants on the back burner to submit to him for what? Because he quoted a couple of scriptures to you in the beginning because you said after he quoted those scriptures you were hooked um you thought that that would make him a good husband really anyone can quote a scripture and, and that's certainly no reason to marry that person you see now anyway i hope you see now that all that catering to him was just stupid on your part you are his wife you're not his child you're not his servant he got everything from you and what did you get in return you didn't get anything i i just think this is wrong you should have you shouldn't have to walk on eggshells in your own marriage. You don't know what to do now. None of this has worked out for you. Now you're miserable. You're unhappy. You're writing a strawberry letter. You know marriage is about, or I hope you should know that marriage is about compromise and love, commitment, among other things. Your marriage doesn't have any of that because it's all about him. You're in this one-sided situation with a man who doesn't love you. He doesn't respect you. He told his parents on his wedding night, maybe he's he hopes he didn't make a mistake. Um, you know, now you're sleeping on the couch. He's sleeping on the couch and he's picking fights with you. He doesn't want to be with you at all. You know, I think Steve said this last week or earlier. Um, yeah, last week. He doesn't like you. He was talking about another situation, but it doesn't sound like this man likes you at all. I think you've wasted enough time trying to please this man. He's ungrateful. I think you now should focus on yourself because you deserve way better than him. Steve. The subject of this letter is, I'm submissive, but is he worth it? Now, I'm not a professional on submissive wives. I don't know what that is, and I'm not an expert on uh, how that part of it should go because you're trying to throw some scriptures in there that you heard him say, but let me just walk you through all the mistakes. I've been married for three years, and uh, he cheated before our wedding. Now, this was two months before the wedding. Now, I've learned from several people. One time I was in counseling, and he said, the thing about marriage is the only thing that changes a person after the wedding is the appearance of his left hand, third finger. If he has a behavior pattern that he does, and you think marriage will change it, it won't. We met online chat room. He said, I had all the values he desired in a wife. He quoted some scriptures and I was hooked. He was married before and his biggest problem, here was the setup, y'all. His biggest problem was that his wife was not submissive. He said she was stubborn and argumentative. I was 48 when we got married. It was my first marriage, so I aimed to please him and do everything just like he asked me to. You were set up to do this. Because he told you what happened to his first marriage was she was not submissive. She was argumentative and stubborn. <laughs> so you proceeded to be the direct opposite of what she was to please him. Thus, we began the downfall of this letter. I will explain it to you more when we come back because I know this one inside out. Thank you. All right, Steve. Hang on. We'll have part two of your response coming up to today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, I'm submissive, but is he worth it? We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, I'm submissive, but is he worth it? Well, you're going to find out very quickly that he's not. And you're also going to find out something about this thing you keep calling submissive. Uh, you met this man online, chat room. Y'all got married. He cheated two months before the marriage. Uh, you found out about it. Uh, anyway, you don't say all that yet. But you say he had been married and his biggest problem was his wife was not submissive. So he told you this to set you up. So the setup was she was not submissive, she was stubborn and argumentative.
So you, realizing this and he knows what he's doing, you began to act the direct opposite because he didn't want to run up into no more non-submissive women. He didn't want to run up into somebody talking back to him. He just didn't want that. So he told you that's what he was doing. So you said you had never been married before, so you aimed to please him and do everything just like he asked you to. I let him run his house and mine. I was the ideal girlfriend because I never stressed him out by questioning him, which means you had some questions. But you allowed yourself not to question him because you didn't want to appear stubborn, argumentative, or non-submissive. Well, now he has you right where he needs you. He came to see you have sex and then leave. You didn't question that because you didn't want to be you wanted to be submissive, you didn't want to be stubborn, and you didn't want to be argumentative. So now he can come over, have sex with you, and leave. I didn't say a word because, for the most part, he's a good man. I would listen to him bragging to his friends about how lucky he was to have me. Oh, he can't believe me. <laughs> I got this chick right here, and I can do like I want to. Mm-hmm. And she let me do it. Because you're submissive. You're not argumentative. And you're not stubborn. Then he cheated, and he couldn't lie about it because his shirt was dirty and he smelled like a woman. And this is the only part I have to interject myself into this right here. What? He cheated, and he couldn't lie about it. What What? What did that mean? <laughs> what do you mean he couldn't lie about it? How? <laughs> How the hell he couldn't? <laughs> I don't give a damn what I smell like and what's on that shirt. You would still lie? <laughs> she could have wrote her cell number on that shirt in <laughs> lipstick with glitter mascara on it. <laughs> and I smell just like Chanel number five. He would have still come up with a lie. Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. So I'm confused. He told me that it was the alcohol and he said he'd never drink hard look again. He lied. Mm-hmm. His mm-hmm. affair just happened two months before our wedding. He got drunk on our wedding night, and he told his parents that he hopes uh, that he didn't make a big mistake. That rocked my soul because all I've done from the beginning is cater to him and make sure all his needs were met. Here's the biggest mistake you made. You made sure all of his needs was met. What about yours? What about yours? Not one place in this letter has this man done anything to you except brag to his friends how lucky he was. I should have left before I made the vows to him. Now when I try to spoil him, he tells me to leave him alone. He picks fights so he can sleep on the couch. I haven't slept in the bed with my husband in three weeks. I vowed to stay for better or for worse. You vowed to stay for better or for worse. He did. Hmm. He didn't. You are submissive. He ain't. You. He starts argumenting. Argument. You're not argumentative. He is. You're not stubborn. He is. See, you became everything he wanted, but you didn't require him to be nothing you wanted. Right. And so now you left holding the bag. But we've hit rock bottom. Is he worth a good submissive wife like me? Or should I change my ways and start acting like his equal? What? <laughs> Where did you come from? <laughs> who who are you? Yes. Should I start acting like his equal and see what happens? What is she doing? I got a little green-eyed equal right now. Won't shut up when I ask her. Okay, careful. Don't do nothing I ask her to do. When you send her, Ain't submissive to nothing I tell her to do unless she agree with it. It, I I don't know what you have. I'm I'm so, he's so fortunate. But see, listen to me. Here's your problem, sister. I got a great marriage. I got a great wife. We're partners. Submissive doesn't mean to any and everything. That's where you got off the boat wrong at. Submissive does not mean you have to be submissive to abuse. You have to be submissive to loneliness. You have to be submissive to inequality. 
That's right. And you have to be submissive to doubt. You can post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, it's Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Oh, oh, Kevin Durant. They talking about him. He's not wanting to stay in Brooklyn. He want out. And I mean, he went out. He going. They got trade talks right now for Kevin Durant to go to Boston. If he go to Boston, a city you don't even care for. <laughs> You've already made that play to clear. Kevin Durant can go to Boston in exchange for Jalen Brown. Whoa. And some draft pick. Yeah. They going to give up Jalen Brown. Mm. <laughs> and then Jelly Brown and Kyrie. I don't know how that's going to work, but right now, Kevin Durant no, will go to Boston. Ain't nothing going to work with Kyrie. <laughs> not then. Ain't nothing going to work with Kyrie. Not J- especially Jalen Brown. This little boy. Yeah. He's 25. <laughs> Kyrie yeah. going to talk to him like he. Yeah. Man, yeah. But I, I don't like I don't like Kevin in Boston. I, I don't like it either. Also, Wasn't they talking it, about <laughs> Phoenix at one time? Yeah. Yeah. But when they, when they signed... Aiden, when they got when they got DeAndre Aiden, they signed him. Then the deal was dead for Kevin because they ain't had no more cap space. It, it, it was it was it would be on the cap space for him. Oh, how they no thought they more. could keep Aiden over Aiden? Oh, Kevin. <laughs> that was, that was ass to see. Well, well, that's what happened. So that's why yeah, he was so <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if you ever known anything Ooh. to be crazy, that was we gonna cool. sign Aiden. And we don't worry about Kevin Durant. What? <laughs> 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 that was the logic. That was actually the logic. Also, in the NFL, man, let's say shout out to my man, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray has signed his extension. That boy went and got an extension for $230 million. Yeah. 160 guaranteed. All oh, that little boy out there working. Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. The Cardinals have signed this boy for 160 mm-hmm. guaranteed. Yeah, they ain't going to get ready to get that till tomorrow. Yeah, now, uh, that's what I was about to ask you. Now, now, so now, what do Lamar think he got, he got coming? And Lamar doesn't use an agent either. Mm. Le- oh, he Le- doesn't. Lamar no, he doesn't. No, he, he's his, his own, own agent. Deal. He's right. Oh, he's his own, really? yeah. he his own deal. What can we think Lamar got? Former MVP of the NFL. Well, I think he's going to ask for that at least. Yeah. Yeah. Two young black quarterbacks. Let's I'm talking go. about out here about to break go. this bank. Go. I got an MVP on my, on my resume. I'm not signing the same thing Kyler Murray signed. <laughs> okay. Well, you know. And you can it's unfold gonna... your arms because that ain't how it works, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I appreciate can't. you being stubborn and all this here, but, you know. That ain't no money to sneeze at, though. No, it's not. No. No, it's not. You know, he got to look at them wins, too, though. You know. Oh, absolutely. He can't get Patrick a home money. He can't get Aaron Rodgers no. money. He can't get that money because... Hey man, you got to win over fifty million. I mean, but why are we? Yeah. <laughs> Thank what, you. What, 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 <laughs> I don't, so you got this. a few more All million right. than me. What, Coming up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at the top of the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Steve, the 83rd Grand Conclave of Omega Psi Phi was held in Queen City, Charlotte this past weekend. Just having a good time. Good time. Uh-huh. Yes. You didn't you make feeling? the claim, dog. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. I'm going to go on out and take all them damn pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but you were there in spirit, though, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh's had a good time, man. Uh-huh. I saw a lot of pictures, man, a lot of videos, got a lot of phone calls. Mm-hmm. Greatest thing at the clay was we have a brand new Grand Bosselis. Mm. The brand new Grand Bosselis of Omega Sci Fi is one of the greatest cues I've ever met in my life. One of the most dedicated, hard at work, hard at working bros I've ever known. Ricky Lewis, okay. former District okay. 12 rep leader of Tall Tall. But that mm-hmm. doggone Ricky Lewis is now the Grand Bosselis, which in other words would be equivalent to President of the United States. <laughs> Grand Bossiness, who means more to me than the President of the United States. So congratulations to Ricky Lewis. Congratulations yeah. to the bros, man. They had a great weekend, man. Uh-huh. A lot of great stories doing? came out of there. Oh, I would have killed myself. 
I would have killed myself because I know I'm too old, man. I know. It's just, them young boys, they, they, they put you in the line and they teach you these new hearts that, uh-huh. that, that they set out new hearts that old bros don't really do too much turning and spinning and uh-huh. kicking and dropping <laughs> in the flow in the spit. <laughs> That can't happen, man. I'm one move as a cue. Let's get on around this thing in this circle. Set this uh-huh. cue hot out for him. Boy, Spice Adams is a cue, right? He got a funny one on his Instagram. I love he got Spice a funny yeah, one about funny. old Spice bros funny. the With day the bro. after being out yeah. all night. Uh-huh. Boy, I hollered laugh. <laughs> and he got another one on about this, this cat that's running track, and he mm. gets to the finish line. Uh-huh. And they was talking about he hardly looked like he had a breath. Then they went oh, up to interview him while I was hot. Uh-huh. I watched it about eight times. <laughs> Spice <laughs> Adams is a bruh, too. Just wanted yeah. to yeah. cut it up Shut for up. me, man. A little bit more time for the hill. Oh! <laughs> Ricky Smiley, D.L. Hughley, what up with your team? Ricky Little is blue. And them almighty brothers down in Psy Gamma. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Why well, I got cut and made? Oh. And to George Clinton. George Clinton is finally a Q. Congratulations, Brother Clinton. Unanimously voted in. Oh, how could we not? Oh, oh. He's going to hurt himself. He is, and he's sitting down. Not himself, his self. His self. <laughs> The cap on the show, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Big up to Anthony Anderson, too, man. You got to show Anthony some love. Uh-huh. Yeah, Ant, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, All Lord. Accused, oh, Lord, have mercy. Shaq, Michael Jordan was there. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, in Charlotte, yeah. Oh, wow. That's hometown. Stephen yeah. A. Smith is a bro. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Even Michael eight. Jordan's a bruh. Shaquille O'Neal's a bruh. Mo Vaughn is a bruh. Alonzo Mourning is a bruh. Oh, wow. Hey, uh, let me ask uh, you, uh, who got the most famous uh, between the Cappers and the Q? Who, who, oh, who it's, it's, uh, hands down. It's them damn Hands Q. down, it's the Cappers. Hands down. It's, it's way hands more down. famous than Q. Hands down, it's the Cappers. It's way more famous than Q. I'm not going to sit here and do it. I'm caring about Junior's part in this kind of fight. I get right on in this fight. I get right on in this fight. Name the famous cap. Me? <laughs> ah, you That's all you team. need. Okay. That's all you need. The cappers got Tommy and the Q's got me. Shut it up. <laughs> Cut it up. Oh, let me think. Oh. I'll tell you when we come back. <laughs> He's got to look it up. All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up what's in 20 minutes What's my famous, uh, uh, uh. Omega Athlete. Right after this. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah, he said it. <laughs> that Is that question. all? That's all you got? <laughs> you ain't got nobody. <laughs> Is that it? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, there was no Mega Millions winner declared on Friday, so now the Mega Million Lottery Jackpot is up, up, up even more. It is over $790 million. I said $790 million, okay? What? Yeah, tonight is the next drawing. Lottery officials suggest that you uh, make a copy of your lottery ticket, get a lawyer and a financial advisor if you win tonight's astounding jackpot. Okay, I got a question. You got to get a who, Shirley? I'm not hiring. You got to get a get financial, got to get no. a copy of your ticket. All right. Okay, copy. Take a c- copy of your lottery ticket. All right. Get a lawyer and then get yourself a financial advisor. Uh-uh. I think oh, that's yeah. great advice. So here's my question. Over 790, over 790, you mm-hmm. win. Do you break off friends, coworkers, family? Uh-uh. How you do it? Yeah, yes. all no. of the above. Yeah. Yes. No, I it's break it. off. <laughs> Oh, you leave. <laughs> you leave. Oh, I, I fall off the grid. there would be no contact. Oh, you... Bro- I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a new cell phone and everything. <laughs> yeah. You ain't even got to call me and ask me. there would be no way to reach me. Unplug all this social media. I'm going to have a fake IG page. <laughs> Tommy already said he's faking his death. <laughs> everything. Oh, my Which is God. crazy. Copy lawyers in the front. All, all right. I need... If I, get the, if I was to get that ticket, I'm hiring me a couple security. I ain't gonna tell them what it's for, and I'm gonna tell them mm-hmm. where we going. And I'm going right down there to the commission, 
as Wait, soon as they us. open. Tell us when we come back. Steve. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll we come back. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, before we left, you were telling us what you would do if you won the over seven hundred and ninety million dollars that's uh, in the Mega Millions for tonight's I'm drawing. Sitting, I, I'll, I'll probably discover at my house that I had a ticket. I'll be looking at the ticket. Mm-hmm. I immediately get on the phone and call for more security. First Keep thing in the time. morning, uh-huh. I need a caravan mm. surrounding my car to take you me can downtown. Afford it. And I won't tell them to the last minute, lottery commission. Mm-hmm. I'm going to walk in. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm going to get this ticket certified and be declared the winner. As soon as I do that, I want that. I don't need nothing now because I don't have a check yet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ride back home. I'm going to tell Marge. Okay. Oh, not what? Gonna tell her tell her first. You, what? You're not going to tell her before you go to the no, lottery commission? No, I don't want nobody knowing before? nothing. That way anybody. Yeah. Why are you telling her period about this? <laughs> you shut what up, you Tommy. What are you telling your wife about I'll this kind of money for, boy? Go ahead, Tommy. How would you handle it? Let's hear this. One. This would be better. I, I'm, I'm with you on like, motorcade, all that. I got all that. Now, when I get out that car, though, I'm getting out butt naked on it. Walking into that lottery place, taking a picture with that big chick, ass naked, right there on the screen. Why do and you now, have to be naked? Why? Because I want everybody to get to kissing right at that point. <laughs> and then right there, my wife and kids going to see me on TV. And uh-huh. that is the last time they going to see their husband and their daddy right there. That is it. <laughs> That that's is it. Terrible. That's You're really a great terrible. father. I'm a youngest. great father, and I think I have been a great father for 20 some years. If you didn't get all the 20-some men, I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your baby My youngest is 11 right, right now. Yeah. He, he got 11 years of that. He got that. My daughter's 17, finna be 18. He got 18. They y'all, got enough time. Some of y'all got to get on your own, huh? <laughs> they got enough. You got enough. I'm going to leave y'all some change and go on, man. Y- y'all and y'all mama gone somewhere. How much really? you going to leave them, Tommy? How much money? I'm going to give them about 10 a piece, huh? 10 That's million good. a piece? Half. That's it? See, 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 and see, see, right there, Carla, you one of them child support mamas. That's what the, you want to do. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm staying half because, you know, that's your wife, your family. Man. She's got to take care of the kids. That's it, half. If you, now, what you, if you were divorced, you, she'd take child half. She'd get half. Half? Yes, they ain't wrote me. half. They ain't wrote half no jokes. They ain't wrote then half of nothing on no damn radio. They, what half they done done? <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. So this is really bad. This is really what? bad. And Steve, you question half too. It's, question. Uh, this is really bad. It's bad if they want some more. This is really selfish. <laughs> we gotta go. All right. I'm really we'll seeing back. where he's coming from. You know? <laughs> no. We'll be back with more of, of the That's Steve bad. Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time now for Steve Harvey's closing remarks. Before we get to that, Steve, today is National Aunt and Uncle Day. Did you know that? Uh uh So happy National Uncle Day. That's right, nephew. Uh, Steve. Happy Uncle Day, man, for you. Yeah, happy Uncle Day, Uh Mm huh. And let me tell everybody out there that's listening. Because it bothers me. I hear people, you know, they be on podcasts. Or I hear people call in, unk this, mm-hmm. unk this. This is not your damn uncle. It's not. <laughs> it's not. How does that bother but, you so much? It bothers me because your ragged Steve. ass uncle ain't doing nothing. So you won't <laughs> mind. That bothers me. But That's Steve's absolutely. everyone's uncle, Steve, uh, Tommy. Everybody. Even celebrities. Celebrities, yeah. celebrities call him Uncle That's Steve. Right. And, 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 them, and them too. Where they ragged ass uncles at? Where they uncles at? <laughs> I don't care nothing about them being no celebrity. I don't. But them hollering, unk this and unk that. Where is your uncle when you go to your reunion? Why you ain't talking about him? Quit. <laughs> Leave mine alone. But he's everybody's favorite so uncle, Uncle Steve. No, he might yeah. be everybody's favorite uh, uh, celebrity or something like that, but he not your uncle. Hey, 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 T, does that apply to me too? Is you trying to You damn that? right it do. You started this. Yes, you you one of them. You where your uncle at, Junior? You got some uncles. Tell me this. You always talking about your family. Where's where's your uncles in your family? 
<laughs> Where really damn my brother? You, <laughs> hey man, hey man, you right, all right. That's why I call him Uncle Steve. Just for that reason, right there. Well, let yeah. me ask you a question. Do you have a question for me about something? Uh, Tommy. Well, I think go he ahead, should. Tommy. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, T. Because you got you got a question for you. You did have a question. What was my question? I forgot about to call. You. For your uncle, you don't remember what your question oh, was. Oh, Uncle, uncle Day, you just forgot it's your uncle damn day. question. Well, I think what about this? I think that your uncle should share some knowledge about success, jewels yeah. for all the nieces and nephews out there listening, because he's everybody's favorite uncle. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Tommy. Mm-hmm. Do you mind, Tommy, if he sharing I, I, him for one I, I, day? I, I, look, we share for this little for this little segment, but but that ain't your damn <laughs> uncle though. Uh, yeah, yeah, he can go on and get him some some knowledge and wisdom. Here goes some knowledge from the nephew. Get you a damn uncle that's doing something. <laughs> He's so territorial. <laughs> get your uncle that's doing see. something. Your uncles and aunties ain't none of y'all doing a damn thing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, that really oh upsets him. You want the really closing remarks, him. music? Man, I wish <laughs> I man, had. Please. Oh, I wish I had somebody. When uh-huh. I was coming up, man, that I could have asked these three million questions that I had, mm-hmm. you know, about <laughs> success and about wanting mm-hmm. something that wasn't regular. Because I wanted something that wasn't normal. Mm-hmm. Right. And what I aspired to was not normal. Mm-hmm. And I had nobody I could ask no questions of, man, because everybody out. And I even stopped presenting my idea to people because he kept shooting it down. Yeah. So I kind of wish I had. I look back on it, man. That was the thing that's missing. Now, God supplied me a lot of other things mm-hmm. to replace mentors and stuff like that. He yeah. uh, put a lot, of, you know, because it's really funny. Have you have you seen that thing where uh, somebody said they, they was praying to God for certain things and he didn't give them anything he asked for, but he gave them everything they needed? Yes, have Lord. you ever mm-hmm. seen that? Yeah. You know, uh-huh. mm-hmm. it's a, uh, here it is right here. I just found or it. Or heard it, you know, you've heard it. It says, uh, this is uh, at, he, this is this man that was talking about God, right? Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, I asked for strength, and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. Mm-hmm. I asked for wisdom, and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity, and God gave me brain and brawn to work. Hmm. I asked for courage, and God gave me danger to overcome. I asked for love, and God gave me troubled people to help. I asked for favors, and God gave me opportunity. Hmm. I received nothing I wanted. I received everything I need. Amen. Trust mm-hmm. in God. That's and right. that's that's mm-hmm. really what I found out about my life because I was sitting up going, wow, God, I didn't have nobody mm-hmm. to teach me or answer the questions. Mm-hmm. He said, I didn't, I didn't create you to be that. I'm going to teach it to you myself. And you're going to learn all the lessons through mishaps, hardships, failures, troubles, situations, opportunities, and everything. And so when I ask God for favor, I also have to realize all the opportunities that's in front of me. Mm-hmm. Because my life is filled with favor. So when I ask God for courage all the time, he always presents danger for me to overcome. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. Yeah, his ways are not our ways, Steve. You're right. Mm -hmm. But the big one I used to ask for was strength. Mm -hmm. So he gave me a whole bunch of difficulties to make me strong. Make you stronger. And I sure appreciate him, too, because his ways ain't our ways, but his Mm -hmm. ways is show the best way. Mm -hmm. I never had that one mentor, but, boy, he showed taught it to me. God been with me the whole time. Thank you, Lord. Those are my closing remarks that I wasn't intending to be closing remarks, but that it was. He works in mysterious ways. Just got to let him use you. Hey, y'all talk to God. He'd love to hear from you, okay? Thank you, Uncle. That ain't your... <laughs> <laughs>